Greetings everyone, it's IT2, and today will be my last video, possibly, on my old microphone. <laughs> Not forever, because I just bought this uh, Rodecaster pod mic, along with this very expensive Rodecaster Pro mixing board. Oh shit, I've set off some sounds. What have I done? Okay, well, I got this XLR cable that I got to order because this one's got a hum in it. And I got to get a USB connector to hook it to my PC because I don't have any USB C slots on my PC. And then I might have to get some other stuff because I don't know how the power is going to work on it. But anyway, um, this video is about Pillars of the Earth, which I just finished reading. And, uh,. It is surreal. It's going into my favorites. It's a thousand pages long ass book. But boy is it worth it. And it's enjoyable the whole way through. It's cozy at times. You feel like you're in this comfortable middle ages kind of world where there's kind of like knights and castles but not really. It's kind of like more towards the like age where people were farming and learning how to like turn wool into cloth and how to build cathedrals so the whole story is about building a cathedral which sounds boring but it's not the story I've heard from like Matt's fantasy book reviews he says it's a story about building a cathedral but the main uh, antagonist is just this asshole guy and you're going to hate him and it's really interesting the way the, the main, the villain in the story is. And I disagree because I think there's actually three or four villains in this story. There's not even a main character. It's like several different characters that are all main characters. And anyway, I was just watching The Patriot with Mel Gibson, the Mel Gibson movie about uh, Revolutionary War in America and then they got to that scene where they burned his house and killed his one of his sons and they took the other son off to be hanged and I was like man that sounds like some shit that would happen in Pillars of the Earth because like a lot of the stuff happens you realize back in those days when you don't have guns you don't really have legal protection kind of like there's a king of England king of France I guess this takes place in England, right? It seems like... I felt like they were going north and west and ending up in Spain or France. Because you also have to realize, back in those days, you have these different countries, but you also have, right after Jesus Christ, there's all this whole Catholicism and Christianity. So you have, like, the Pope, and he's over all these archbishops, and all those archbishops are over all these regular bishops. And they have... Archbishoprics and, and bishoprics and deaconships and priors. Like, there's all these different levels of church people that are over all of these different villages. And you've got earls that are over some of the villages, and they pretty much can do whatever the fuck they want. Earls can. And maybe dukes is below earl, I think. And the king's above. Is there something between earl and a king? I don't know, but like, in this story, the king and this empress Ma that she thinks she should be the ruler and the king Stephen, they get to like doing the civil war for years, so they're kind of like not really enforcing anything, so the earl kind of does whatever the fuck he wants, he's like the main bad guy. No, he's not even the earl. His dad was the earl, his dad dies, and he becomes kind of like the earl in waiting. I'll tell you about it in a second. Anyway... Uh, yeah, they can just do whatever they want and just <laughs> tear through a town and just raid it. And the people are just like, eh, what are you going to do? And then later on, he comes back to the town and he's like, eh, there he is. It's the Earl. He's like a citizen. He's just like, eh, I killed and burned a bunch of people and raped them last week. But now I'm here to like, I got to go shopping for shoes or something. It's like, <laughs> it's like a normal thing. Um... So anyway, let me bring up this chart to like kind of go. Oh, also, this is the first of four books 
There's a prequel to this called The Evening in the Morning, which I guess is even earlier. This book takes place around 1140 to around 1170 something, it's like 30 something years. Kingsbridge is what this quartet, I guess we call it, is called. And there's also the Century Trilogy by Ken Follett, which is supposed to be a book series that takes place over about 100 years. But I know like the second book, World Without End, and the third book, Column of Fire, these ones take place around like 1400 and the 1700, I think, for the other ones. I don't know. Like and Then book four is the Armor of Light, which I saw at Walmart the other day. So I guess these ones are kind of like I don't, it's not really a hundred years, but like they're all in the same place over different time periods. Pretty wild. Um, as far as the, hmm, what am I going to say about like the style of the book or whatever? Yeah, I mean, it's like, there's a lot of talk about architecture, which you may not be that excited about, but he doesn't really make it boring. But then, it's like you're in different chunks. You'll be like this kind of a slice of life, like what it's like living in that time. And I like how you kind of see how the money kind of situation progresses and how people like go from being super poor to like acquiring some money and they start figuring shit out and they start getting kind of wealthy. And then someone will come along and just wipe out their fortunes and like, well, they got to rebuild. And then they kind of like get their money bill back up again. I like, like keeping track of like the inventory and the money situation with the characters. Like, especially with Name of the Wind. I like that, that one. Harry Potter. No, he didn't really. He was just rich from the fucking start. There are some books like that, though. It's like you get to keep track of the characters. What they have. And what they're like trying to survive with. Anyhow, let me bring up this chart. Uh, yeah. Here are your main characters. This book... You think the main character is Tom Builder because usually the first point of view you start out with is the main character. But he dies like halfway through or like a little before halfway through. Tom Builder gets killed. So I was like, well, this is not Tom Builder. So it starts out, the whole book is about, it revolves around this woman, Elena, who has like just the nicest set of titties anybody has ever seen. And this guy can follow it. I don't know if he's like a perv. <laughs> he just keeps talking about these damn titties, like how great they are. And even towards the end of the book, the guy that ends up marrying her, Jack, he's talking about like, man, when I was young, she had them titties with the nipples pointing up, perky. And then she had the baby and her nipples got up bigger and she started to sag, but I still liked them. I wonder if like, when she gets old, her titties are gonna be old and wrinkly. I bet I'll still like them then. <laughs> he just keeps talking about these damn titties on oh, this woman they must have been fucking fire so the book starts out with Tom Builder this is a man who wants to build a church a cathedral he wants like his life's ambition is to build and he had like some good job opportunities but he passed them up because the churches were too small he's looking to build a big cathedral takes his wife and his son Alfred and his daughter Martha, who's kind of just like a side character. You don't really hear that much about Martha. And his wife's pregnant, and she's ugly. Agnes is not a good-looking woman. <laughs> I just realized how like chauvinistic kid Bob is when you get thinking about how he wrote these characters. So Agnes, uh, they're going along for like a year looking for work, and they can't find it. And they're starting to get really hungry and starving and poor and just really really bad off and she has the baby so they just abandon it and they just leave it oh Agnes dies in childbirth also so they, he buries his wife puts the baby on Agnes's grave and him and his other kids they, he beats this woman Ellen Ellen I put in the chaotic neutral category Tom Builder is pretty much true neutral, except for this first act where he abandons his baby. <laughs> it's pretty evil, but other than that, he's true neutral. And, uh, yeah, this is like an RPG alignment chart for the Dungeons & Dragons, if you haven't seen how that works before. I'm sure you've probably seen some memes. So Ellen is like this really 
attractive woman, very tan and muscular and got golden eyes, and she lives in the woods like a wild woman. Everybody thinks she's a witch. And she has a son named Jack. Now, Jack is probably the main character, but at the beginning, he's, like, not important at all. And eventually, Alina will come into the picture here. So, like... They abandon this baby, Jonathan. He uh, he gets adopted by the monks uh, for the church that he's going to go to later and, like, ends up living with the monks and Tom Builder never tells him that he's his father. Um, So he ends up going off with this woman, Ellen, and her son, Jack, and his two kids. So all five of them. So they're going around poor and hungry and destitute until they finally get to Kingsbridge. There's probably a lot of stuff happening in between there. But they, uh, there was this uh, small monastery where Prior Philip was at first. Um, something in the forest. That they find Jonathan that has been adopted by these monks. And they see him there and they say, oh, he's doing fine. And they end up, the Prior gets promoted to Kingsbridge. I forgot how. So Kingsbridge is like a small village. But this Prior is like Prior Philip. He's lawful good. He's a very good person. He saw his family killed when he was younger and he decided to become a monk because he saw this monk come in and with just the belief in the power of God he made these people go away. So he's like, that's what I'm going to do. He's very faithful to the Lord and you learn a lot about like how monks do all these prayers constantly, even like in the middle of the night they'll get up and start praying and like very kind of hard, but they also like they kind of run a business. It's kind of like being Amish, how they always have furniture stores and stuff like that. So the monks, they will farm and they will collect wool and they will sell the wool or they'll turn it into cloth and then sell the cloth or they'll make clothes out of the cloth, like the homespun wool robes you always see monks wearing and like games and stuff. And then they use that money to like feed poor people and to like build the churches and like take care of all the business and stuff and like they get land donated to them and then they take care of the land and they just find work for people and just kind of do a lot of good stuff I don't even know how to explain it back in those days it's just how it kind of worked the church just kind of ran everything so this village starts getting kind of prosperous and turning into a pretty good sized town now there was this guy they find the king before Stephen I think it was nope he died and then Stephen took over and this woman, the Empress Maud, she wanted to be the ruler for some reason. I didn't explain like what the relationships of them were, but like they're feuding. And one of the earls was against the king. He was planning on doing a coup or something like that. So Percy Hamley, he was like a duke, a minor duke. He finds out about it and he goes and raids his castle, like sneaks in before anybody suspects him because he doesn't, they don't know that he knows yet, right? So they all get his, his soldiers in there and they take over the castle and they turn this guy into the king and he becomes the new earl. Now his son is a son of a bitch. He'd already like been riding his war horse around all willy nilly and like not being careful and he almost killed Tom Builder on his way through the story earlier. He almost ran him down in the road. Didn't give a fuck. He's one of these characters that just don't give a fuck. He's bad at managing things. He's just always looking for he's also a rapist and he only can get an erection if he's like raping somebody it seems like um, because once they he become, his dad becomes Earl the, the old Earl's son and daughter is Alina and Richard they had another servant who kind of seemed gay but they killed him pretty quickly so after Percy Hamley, the Earl, he gets killed, I think. How did he die? I can't remember how he died. But anyway, I think that was way later because he was still Earl from the Hamley's place. Hamley was maybe the town. Back in the early Middle Ages, by the way, this was before people even used last names. Like a lot of them, like. Waller and By God, I think that was his last name, but like Tom Builder, that's his he was professional was builder. And then his son's Alfred, I guess his name would be Alfred Builder. Like they didn't even have for like a whole naming system or anything back then. 
Did you guys know that the first passports were used in like 1441 or something like that? Uh, anyway. William Hamley, anyway, he becomes, takes his dad's position where he should be the Earl, but by that time, Richard has kind of grown up. He was the son of the old Earl, so kind of he should also be in contention, and he becomes a knight at that point. Uh, but I can't remember like how Alina and Richard were living in the castle where their dad had gotten killed for a while. And that's when William Hamley sees her sweet ass titties, and he's like, "I am going to rape this woman." He rapes her, and he loves it because he loves the, putting fear in somebody before he gets his erection and loves that kind of stuff. <sighs> this guy's such an asshole, riding his horse around and like raping people right off the bat. So, Alina says to her, her brother Richard, she's going to take care of him. They're, they make an oath to themselves. They're going to, like, get Richard to become the Earl where her father was before the, they die. That's their, their oath and that's their main motivation. So, she kind of supports Richard whenever he needs a new sword or a new horse. She has to, like, give him her money. She figures out, like, all these people having all these sheep farms and they're taking the wool way off to this town and they lose a day's work. So, she, like makes these deals. She'll go around and cart the wool to the town for them. She'll pay them a little bit less, but they'll get that extra day's work, so it's worth it to them. And she kind of starts this business of, like, selling wool, and then they have this thing called fulling, where you turn the wool into cloth by putting it in water and hammering it with sticks, and I thought you used urine for fulling wool or something, but anyway. Uh, before we get into that, we should talk about Kingsbridge becoming more of a bigger town, and Tom Builder has started building the cathedral, and Philip's using the money from the wool and stuff to, like... He's also got free wood, because the king gave his priorship... Like, there's a whole deal between the earldom and this quarry and the, the sheep farms and the, the wood, where they would get to use some of that stuff. And the Hamley, he keeps fucking with them and trying to, like, take the quarry back. And, like, they get into, like, this war with William Hamley. He's always this bastard. He's always doing the worst shit. And he ends up getting pissed. And he goes in with his dudes. He's got this guy named Walter and Hugh Axe and some other dudes. And they go in with these, like, burning torches and just torch the whole town. And they rape some people and they loot it. And they just burn everything to the fucking ground in Kingsbridge. Pretty much wipes them out. 197 people died, I think, was what it says. So then, like, he leaves, and, like, later he'll just come back, and it's like they don't know, or they, don't, they forgot, they don't care. This is the only part I don't like about the book, is, like, they never explain, like, why is he getting away with this? Why don't we all, like, gather together just beating his ass to death or killing him somehow? I know he's in, like, this castle, which is, like, you have to siege it, and it's, like, hard to do, but surely somebody can, like, trick him or get him out of there and, like, just gank him. He's even coming to the town. Like, just kill him when he's in town. What are y'all doing? do not make any sense. So then, um, yeah, Alina, she's like getting pretty rich on this wool stuff. And this guy, you can, during the, the fleece fair, which they kind of stole from Shire, what was it called? Shirech? Shire, whatever his town was called. He had like, they're kind of in competition with Kingsbridge. They have their own fair where they sell wool and Kingsbridge made this new one and everybody went to that one instead of his so he got really pissed he burned the town down and they burned Alina's oh Jack had built her this big out of the windmill you know you make it into like a hammering machine and it fools the wool for her so she can make more money Alina also had been uh, courted by almost everybody in the town and she'd always refused to everybody she wouldn't sleep with anybody but then Jack, he comes in sideways as a friend, and he like makes her this wool thing, and he takes her to the woods, and he starts telling her all these stories because he knows them. Because his father, who had long passed away, he was hanged. It's not, he was a jongleur, which is a guy who, uh, kind of like a minstrel, he'll tell you stories, he'll remember them, and he can remember all these things. I don't think he'd ever played any music or anything, but it's like a jongleur is kind of like something they have in France. Like on the roads, you'll meet a guy and he'll tell you stories or whatever. Pretty cool profession. Jack turns out he's like kind of retarded in the beginning, but then he learns from Tom Builder how to build things, and he gets really good at carving stone, sculptures, and stuff like that. 
Then he starts getting into like the mathematics of the architecture and Euclid and all this kind of shit. And right after they burned down the town, he had um, he was building most of this cathedral and he got most of it built. Alfred also was helping. He was like uh, he's kind of like a gang leader or something for like the the foreman for the workers or whatever. But he's kind of an asshole. He's always fucking with Jack when they were growing up. Fighting with him and stuff. And I think at one point... Um, how did it happen? Jack had to leave? And then Alfred ended up marrying Alina. When Jack was in love with her. Or she kind of got forced into it. And then he tried to... Oh yeah, her, his mother Ellen came out of the forest because... Tom Builder had died by then. I think he died maybe in, in the, the burning of the town. And she cursed the wedding so he would be impotent. And Alfred is like neutral evil because he's impotent and he can't have sex with his wife. I think he only wanted her because Jack liked her too. So that's kind of his deal. He's, he's evil but he's neutral evil. He's kind of just kind of passively just a dick. Until the very end he tries to kill Elena. And then he gets murdered. He gets killed. But Jack, I think, right? Yeah, this story's fucking crazy. Um, Waller and By God, he's just kind of like this bishop that's all ahead. He's like over Philip, and he's always like kind of competing with him and trying to do things to like fuck up Philip's plan. But Philip's like so smart, he's always like outsmarting him. And it almost seems like God is on Philip's side tries to do things because he's like improves this monastery he moves to this Kingsbridge place he starts improving it they burn the town down and then he comes up with this idea to uh, build a wall around I think and then Jack helps him build a wall and that way the next time they come to raid the town they get fucked they're like well there's a wall here we can't do shit but uh, right after the the town burned down Jack was gone Alfred was trying to like build the roof of the cathedral and he made it out of stone and it wasn't really designed for that it was too heavy and during one of the services it fell down and it killed like another 69 or 96 people something like that so there's about 300 people in those buildings got killed by fire also Jack burned down the original cathedral <laughs> I forgot about that. he burned it down because Tom Builder didn't have any work and he was going to starve if he didn't so he burned down the old cathedral because he wanted him to build a new one and then he tells him, like, pretty much on his deathbed that he's wanted to burn down the cathedral. So Jack had gone off to find, like, learn about his father, and he went to Spain or something. Starts learning all these new building techniques on how to build cathedrals out of glass and all this kind of stuff and make them lighter. And he meets, like, this kind of an Arabic girl he almost marries, but then Alina... She realizes that's her true love, so she goes on a trip to find Jack. She chases him all the way through his trail, and that's where the story kind of diverges from Kingsbridge to like this love story with Elena and Jack, which is really good. So she finally finds him, and he hasn't slept with this Muslim girl or whatever. Brings him back. They have a couple of kids. One of them's like a stained glass maker. The other one's a soldier, like Richard. Richard is a really good soldier, by the way. It's the only thing he's good at. Like, he can't get a job. Lena always supports him, takes care of him. And he's fighting off in the King's Wars and stuff. And he comes back and he, like, fucks with William Hamley. <laughs> Ellen, she, like, came and, like, pissed on the church service one time. Got up on the table and just took a piss right there. So she's been, like, kicked out of this town for, like, being a witch, like, a couple of times. She's cursing this wedding with the chicken blood and stuff where it made Alfred impotent. Like, the, the fucking stories is, like... A little bit of slice of life, a little bit of architecture, a little bit of learning about how wool is made, and all of a sudden, rape and kill the town and burn everybody, and I curse you, you'll never get an erection again. <laughs> it's like, whoa, what was all that about? And like, whoo, and everything calms back down. And let's rebuild, and you start learning a little bit more about, I don't know, stone quarrying, <laughs> like some kind of medieval shit. And it's like, I don't know. It's like nobody can do anything about William Hamlin. They just can't handle him. He comes with clubs at one point. Like, nobody has bows and arrows much. 
Just like there's no if you if you're like a guy with armor and you have a horse, holy shit! It's like a, you're a tank. Like nobody can touch you. It's like everybody else is like unarmed. They don't have any kind of armor. Maybe they'll have a mule. Nobody has like a horse. What are you talking about? A horse? Like you have to have like three pence or something to buy a horse. Can't afford that shit. But like, yeah, there's like all these other towns that kind of get involved with Kingsbridge and like the other churches and all these kind of scheming and plotting. With Waller and buying out and Remedius, he's like the guy who's one of Philip's monks, but he's also kind of a spy for Waller and Baiga. But then he has this really awesome redemption arc at the end. There's this whole thing with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas. He becomes like, oh, they have the saints and the relics they have to display on these cathedrals, and they bring in pilgrims, and that's another way that they make money, by the way. It's all really cool and exciting. William Hamley... He does something else towards the end. I can't remember. He even becomes like 50, 60 years old. He lives a long life. Finally gets hanged at the end. Ah, oh, so rewarding when he gets hanged. But like before that, he was like plotting with Waller and by God, and he was trying to do something. I can't remember. There's a whole lot of stuff happens. This book's a thousand pages long. I mean, I could go on and on. But, yeah. If it wasn't for Elena's sweet ass tits, I don't think a lot of the plot in this story wouldn't have happened. Jack, he was one of the biggest lovers of the tits, but he wasn't like so invested in that he wouldn't leave if he didn't have to. Elena almost left Jack at one point just because uh, Waller and By God <laughs> wouldn't By God marry him because Elena was still officially married to Alfred, and the church didn't want to sanction the annulment because. Why was it? Just because they, they didn't want to help him out or something? I can't remember why they didn't want to, like, do the annulment. I think it was, like, despite Philip or something, like, they had to do something before they could. Like, spend a couple of years living apart, and they would go meet in their secret forest where he would used to read her stories, and they would have really awesome sex in this waterfall, and he'd play with her nipples, and he'd talk. I mean, there's a lot of titty descriptions and <laughs> like playing with tits and they're talking about her tits and <laughs> I've never seen the book talking about tits so much boy this guy loves titties <laughs> oh my god uh, but Jack Jack is just a really great character how he gets smart and he like burns down the cathedral and he rebuilds it and plays with titties a lot <laughs> he goes on a quest and his father and this whole drama like figuring out who his father is and why Waller and By God was the By God guy that hung his father. He was like involved with it because he was on a ship with the guy that should have been the king, and it was it crashed, and then they found him and put him in a dungeon, and he was they thought he was going to talk about who killed the guy that was I don't know. It's a whole big deal. So much stuff. Uh, anyway, William Hamley, such a fucking dick, always just sitting around. Raping all the time. Trying, he's always got like these people, like women he'll find and he'll rape them. Like there's a couple of scenes where he has a woman that he can have sex with, but it's like, eh, she kind of wants to have sex with me. I'm not into that. It's like it's like it's not. <laughs> it doesn't turn him on. He can't get a boner. <laughs> I don't think he's just not got somebody cowering in fear. It's fucked up. But it's a really good story. Plot-wise, it's like, I don't know. It's not like a really well-put-together, like, beginning, middle, and end type story. Like, your typical plot where the resolve, this needs to happen and this will resolve. I mean, it kind of does towards the end, but it's kind of like all loosely connected until all of a sudden at the end, everything kind of get comes together and... I highly recommend this. I don't know if the other books are going to be as... Sweet. I don't know, like the different. I don't know the, the time periods. I don't know if I'm gonna like them as much. The prequel, the morning and the evening, evening and the morning. That'll be even earlier than this. So I don't know. Maybe that'll be good. I mean, we're talking about what? Fourteen hundred is the next book. Work with that in. 
So what kind of technology did they have back then? It's still like knights and stuff. I think it's going to be good. Anywho. Ken Follett's not even like a historical fiction guy. He writes like thrillers and stuff. But he decided to write this kind of like not even expecting it to do good. Like he didn't know if it was going to be good or anything. But like it turns out to be phenomenal. So five out of five stars. Um... I feel like I'm forgetting a whole bunch of stuff, but it doesn't matter. You guys didn't even watch this.